I'm sure you've heard about OBS plugins, maybe from one of my previous videos or somewhere else on the internet or YouTube. To be honest, you're going to hear OBS plugins a lot because they offer so much creativity to add to your content. Whether it's a video or whether it's your stream, it doesn't really matter. You can use these plugins in so many different ways. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how you install these plugins and show you what plugins I recommend and then give you a couple demonstrations on how I use them personally. Before we get to installing plugins, you're going to want to view this video. This is going to tell you how to put OBS in portable mode, and there's a very specific reason why you should. It's because plugins are not easy to uninstall. Now, the reason why some of these are not easy to uninstall is because sometimes it has to change some of the core code just a little bit in OBS to function properly. Just make sure you're backing up before installing because you don't know if the, uh, the plugin has been updated or optimized or maybe it's just really design bad and is gonna wind up crashing OBS time and time again. These are all community made. So where do you find OBS plugins? It's actually rather easy. All you have to do is go to obsproject.com slash forum slash plugins, and this will bring you to the OBS plugins page. And in here is a amazing amount of plugins that you can choose from. One thing I always say to pay attention to with this is look at the ratings and just kind of check to see how many downloads there are and just how many ratings there are. That'll give you a good indication of whether this is going to be a solid install or not. So let's say you're like, you want to download one of the most popular ones, the Move plugin. So the first thing you would do is we're going to download the folder. When you go to choose your download, you need to choose which one is going to fit your setup. So we have a Mac OS setup, one for Linux. Then there's a Windows installer and the Windows zip. The difference between the Windows installer and the Windows zip is the installer is going to go ahead and act like any other setup to a program inside Windows, which is, you know, something very familiar. The only reason I don't recommend this path is because if you're like me and you put your OBS somewhere else and you back it up and you move it around and you have to take it from this PC to that PC, it's a lot easier when you take the second approach where you're taking the Windows zip and just those folders and doing a drag and drop. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how easy this is. First, we're going to download. Once it's done downloading, we just open up the zip file and you'll see that it'll have this data and this OBS plugins folder. Now, this is very simple. All you have to do is do extract to find your OBS studio. And then you'll see when you have this OBS studio folder open, the data and OBS plugin folders are already there. This is exactly what you need to do. You're going to take these folders and put them in there and replace them. This is automatically going to put all the files where they need to be. It's also going to wind up being a little bit of a cleaner install because it's going to go ahead and replace any of the files that need to be replaced. This is also the reason why you probably can't uninstall things easily, but that's OK. If you backed up your OBS, you should be good to go. So once we do that, we hit OK and we should be all right. Alternatively, if you are like me and you want to make sure that everything worked exactly as it needed to, you just grab them and drag them over and drop them in. And then it's going to actually come up with that prompt. Me, this is the way I like to go just so that way I can make sure Yes, this put, was being put in the way it's supposed to be. So I just hit yes to all. And now those that plugin is installed. So since I installed the OBS move plugin, this revolves around using filters to alter how your sources work. Now, don't mind me. I'm using my Atom vertical plugin to actually put myself in the other OBS while I'm recording because, hey, got to make it work. I have two OBSs running. So let's say we wanted to do a camera move. Well, you're going to go down, you're going to right click on camera and go to filters. As you can see, it'll pop up with this window. Then you go down to this effects filter and right here you have new filters you can choose from. Move action, move source and move value or move video capture device. There's so many different things that come with the move plugin that it really does offer a lot. So let's just kind of give a demonstration real quick. So let's do a move source. So you can name this whatever you need to. And trust me, you're going to need to name it something. So we're just going to say test. Now, see on the source, 
it's saying the filter only works on scenes and groups, which means that you need to put this not on the source itself, but on the scene. So what we just do with that would be delete. Now we'll come over to where it says game screen and we'll go to filters. Now we have the effects filters here. We just hit the plus, go do the move source. And again, we call it test. Now it's gonna come up and show you a whole bunch of different options. So it does matter where you use these because of how it's programmed, but more importantly, that it is only going to work in the space that it needs to. So since this is applying to a specific scene, this will not then affect another scene. So if you have your just chatting screen where you're just interacting, no gameplay, you know, something that looks like this, who knows? Then when you go to a gameplay screen and you're moving the camera around, this screen doesn't get affected. Now, when we go in here to this test, we can choose what are we going to change around? So I'm going to go ahead and choose the camera groups. That way my camera is moving around. The start delay, that's only if you want it to delay after you, you have started the action. Sometimes you don't even need this and you just let it go. The duration is how long it's going to take to go from point A to point B. And just that way we can get a nice look at how this works. We're going to do 2000 milliseconds, which is two seconds. This get transform, it's automatically going to populate with where my camera currently sits. And if I'm happy with where it currently sits, I just leave it alone. Or if you really want to double check, you hit get transform. What I do mess with is the start trigger. And I always make sure that I have it as enabled when the icon is in front of the filter is enabled. Now, the reason I have it like this is that way, anytime this is activated and turned on, it automatically does what it needs to do and it will shut off when it's done. I love that. Well, now we need to set this up to where the camera is going to move from one side to the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my camera group. I'm just going to move it over here. Hang on. Pull that up. So now I have the camera group over here. We go back to the filters and we add another move source. So I can do this test two. So this is basically saying that we're going to have a, you know, a second position it's going to go to. We're going to choose that camera group again, and we're going to do another 2000 milliseconds. We're going to come down. We're going to go to the get transform, make sure that it's there. But what if you want it to spin around while you're while it's moving? Well, if you go into the rotation, let's say we want to have it do a through, you know, we want it to do a full flip one flip. So 360 degrees. Cool. We'll do that. Then we'll come down to the start trigger and we will do again the enable when the eye filter is enabled. Now, if we want to tie these together, what we can do is that when this ends, we're going to make sure that it goes right back. So the next move will take us back to where we want to be. So now what should happen anytime we hit test two, we're going to flip out and flip back. So that's one way you can do this. Now, if you wanted to take it, just make it a very smooth thing, we can reset that to zero and just move it left and right for easy. And if we test it again, and now I'm sliding back and forth on the screen, the move transition alone can make your camera go from big to small to left to right, up and down. You can do this with not just your camera, but you can do it with the gameplay. You can do it with any source you have that is on the screen, which makes things so interesting. So this is all great, but what do you do to make this actually work for you? Well, let's say you don't have something like a stream deck. What if you don't have a bot or you don't understand how to set up those bots that can interact? Well, you can always do hotkeys and hotkeys are pretty much the same thing. You just do it with your keyboard. So when you are in your OBS, you would go down to the settings. And it's going to pop up with this window and you go down to where it says hotkeys. So if you start flipping through, you're going to see that you can hotkey pretty much everything with your stream. You can actually set everything up the way you want it to. But the thing you're going to look for to make this happen, the scene we applied this to was the game screen. And if you come down, you will see test and test two. Now, the way I set it up was kind of backwards because I didn't think it through. But test two is what we would want to trigger. So let's say I want to make this hotkey uh, control right. So we have control right. I'm going to hit apply and then we can close it. Now, anytime I hit control right, the action's going to take off like it's going to do right now. So I just hit the hotkey and now it's doing exactly what I want. 
It's super simple to set up hotkeys. The hardest part is to keep them all in your head. But if you have something like a stream deck, you can set up in a stream deck to have a hotkey. You can set up so many different things through your stream deck or through a bot or through hotkeys, however is going to be the most comfortable for you. So that's really the basis of this. Now I do have a quick pointer. How do you know which plugins that you really should use? Well, for one, I'm going to go ahead and say this. If this plugin is made by Exceldro, I can absolutely 100% guarantee that Exceldro has made a very stable, very polished product. Exceldro is considered one of the best in the business when it comes to coding for OBS Studio. So if it's made by Exceldro, you're good to go. So here I am in my personal setup on OBS Studio. There's a reason why I'm bringing my personal one up is because I wanna show you how you can take multiple different plugins and create something fun. One of the favorites that's on my channel, and that's the one that turns me into Thanos, so to speak. And this is what it does. I have where a voice mod effect goes off. I have where the color is changing. My perspective is changing. I even had a, added a little infinity gauntlet for fun. There are so many fun possibilities with this. So I hope that I get to see some of your creations from this. Don't forget to throw a comment down there. Show me what you've made or just tell me what you've made. I'm always fascinated to see the different things that people create with all these different plugins that are available. If you're looking for more tips and tricks and more things when it comes to streaming, OBS, and soon streamer bot, then you should hit that subscribe button, hit a like to help me get out there and show others how they can make their streams a little bit more fun. So if you have any questions, make sure you're leaving a comment down there and asking questions I will answer, or you can come into my Twitch stream when I'm live. Or if you want a more immediate answer, go to my Discord server and ask in there. We have a whole section dedicated to this kind of stuff. So with that, I hope you have fun with these plugins. I wish you the best of luck putting together your next amazing creation, and I will see you on the next video. Have a good one.